semi-final A for the Nations Cup here in Monaco is about to get underway. Mikazal will lead the field over the timing line as we go racing here in Monte Carlo. Igor Fraga ducks into the slipstream as Azal leads the field over the timing line for the first time of asking. They're all trying to get an advantage as they come down in towards the first corner. Rick Kavlum's out wide into T1. He got caught out unsighted by somebody breaking on it. Has that and Fraga has at a moment. He's at a spin oh. at the outside of turn one and drops right to the back of the pack. That is an absolute disaster for Igor Igor Fraga. Trey and Roos were riding on board with. Let's see what happened down at T1. Was there contact between him and Fraga? Nope, Fraga oh. just got unsettled on the curb there, didn't he? Simply with that now. Um, again, a reminder, Igor Fraga, our champion from last year, currently, if the race ended, would be out of the competition in the first semi-final. So that is pretty crazy to think, but long way to go just yet. We're on board with Adam Siswillo, currently in fourth position. I love this new onboard car. It's a bit more involved, I think, than the static one. It gives us a real uh, feel of what the drivers and what they're looking at. I mean, of course, in game, the, the camera is static. But you, when, when you're driving around, your eyes move around a lot. So it kind of simulates that somewhat. Point of vision is everything, isn't it, as yeah. well? It, you know, it really helps when you're looking through a corner. It gives you a better idea of uh, where you've got to go. And you'll see that here with Adam Sassuolo, that You can see the eyes of the driver. They're moving towards the inside of the corner to try and get as better line as possible through there. So Fraga just picked up a penalty picked up a cut tap penalty and he was only about uh, nine tenths behind Kevin Pounder but now that gaps back up for two seconds it is not looking 1.8 seconds now this is not looking good for Eagle. This is not looking good at all. It's very interesting to see how it's all playing out between these wilds. Meanwhile, in the background, you saw Benjamin Barda and Jose Brea going hammer and tong as Adriano Carazza muscled his way through into P9. We only caught the back end of that one. Was there any more contact between Carazza and Barda? Because those two, uh, well, they've been running very close on circuit. And don't forget that Carazza had that warning after the first corner. Here's what happened, Jimmy. So here we are then. Uh, it's Carazza and, oh, I think he... I, he lost on his own, didn't he? I don't know. I'm not sure if he was held off there by Carazza or not. I think he started to slide and Carazza just didn't really react to it. And here we are riding now on board with Igor Fraga. Out of the final corner, he's only got three laps now to do it here. Fraga, well, he's a man. He knows how to race under these conditions. He knows how to race under pressure. He does it in real life, and he has got a lot of pressure to at least secure his place in the repercharge here, Jimmy. And he's going to drop right to the back of this little gaggle and Fraga there into the back of Kevin Pounder. I think he was just running a little bit slower there through uh, uh, that corner was Kevin Pounder and Fraga was just a bit unsighted, but, uh, well, this is going to get very interesting indeed. We're on board with Igor Fraga. We have Kevin Pounder in front, where he has been for the last few laps. Kevin Pounder looks like he's going to just drive down the middle of the road. Igor, the last second, dives to the inside. Right the inside, then, of Kevin Pounder. He goes, and Pounder tried to turn in there, and there was a big Fraga on the apex, so no, nope, no room at the end there. Fraga goes up to P9, which means now only two positions between him and the repertoire. Speaking of penultimate, two laps left remaining here. It is all to play for for this final spot in the repertoire, and it's anybody's guess at the moment as to who is going to make it through. Out of these three, Adam Tuswilo is not going to be going by. Lewis Hamilton there in the bottom left hand corner watches on, and Ryan de Roosh is overtaken by Mangano, pushed wide, and Tuswilo forces his way up the inside. They're side by side, banging door handles now down towards T4. Adam just about has the inside line. I think, yeah, Ryan just has the overspeed can get back up front and uh, to Defend the position, but that was almost rain going from second to fourth. Whilst that was kicking off, Jimmy, Igor Fraga was given a penalty for one reason or another. He's now down into P10 as we now ride on board here with Ray Andarouche. And I think that uh, Igor Fraga's penalty, I'm just being told in my ear from the race stewards, was because of a corner cut. So that was a half second penalty that he would have served. Ah, there and you go. There you go. A flash of the lights, meanwhile, for Adam Tuswillo as he tries to find his way back past Ray Andarouche here. On to the last lap we come in semi final A. I don't know what's going to happen, but it's going to be exciting. We come on to the final lap here of semi-final A. It's Mangano, Derouche, and Susuilo. One, two, three, or two, three, four, I should say. And uh, Mick Hazal out in front, seemingly going to win it. But this is all in Ray and Derouche's hands right now. If he can defend just one more lap from the Briton behind, he'll be going through to the grand final automatically, whereas Susuilo will be going through to the repertoire. We're running out of corners. This is going to get very exciting and probably pretty interesting in the midfield part of this lap through into the right hand. There we go. You can see Sosuilo taking a really nice tight line through there. Rides up onto the back of Ray Andarouche. Will he think about a move into the next left-hander? Will Darouche defend that line? Up the inside we go for Sosuilo. He takes a lunge, but Darouche firmly shuts the door against the Briton, and he retains third place for the time being through the left 
we go then. And Sassuolo, he's going to have to surely have a dive at the penultimate or the final corner to try and make it through. But Darouche is doing a fantastic job of defending, as is Mangano in front. And speaking of doing fantastic jobs, Mikhail Hazal is leading the way very commandingly indeed here. But out of the final corner and over the line to take the win in semi-final A. It's Mikhail Hazal who's on top. Giorgio Mangano finishes second, Rayan Darouche in third. Adam Sassuolo kept him honest right until the end, but he finishes P4. And making it through to the Rebajaj is Benjamin Barda. Brea, Karadza, Fraga, Pounder and Kim Long Lee will go no further here tonight.